Hey everyone, Michael Wagner here again with another West Words blog, vlog, whatever it is for 2022 in January. So nice to be with you today. I'm going to try and answer in simple terms a question that lots and lots of kids ask me and have asked me over the years. And that question is where ideas come from? Where do ideas come from? And I'm going to tell you that getting ideas is really simple. The tricky part is knowing what to do with them. And in fact, getting ideas is e just as easy for you as it is for me because we're surrounded by ideas all the time. But I'll explain as we go. I'm going to tell you how I got the first few ideas for this little series, Max Rumble Footy, which became also Max Rumble Cricket and then Max Rumble Soccer. So 20 different books. But they all started with just a couple of ideas that I just put together into one series or one book that then became a series. The first idea was about what I thought I would like to read as a kid. You know, I thought back to when I was maybe 10 years of age or something like that and thought, what is it that I would have loved to read about? And I thought, well, right back then, one of the things I absolutely loved was footy, especially this is AFL footy, by the way, especially high flying marks like this. That's the sort of thing I loved when I was a kid. So I thought, OK, well, why don't I write some books about footy? And then I thought, I actually really like it when funny things happen on the sporting field, like this sort of thing. This is a soccer player celebrating a goal in a very silly way by putting his uh, T-shirt up over his head, uh, over his face so he can't see, and then running around flying like an aeroplane. Very bad idea. Kids used to do that in the in the little junior leagues as well. And it led to all sorts of trouble, including one time one kid kicked a goal, put his T-shirt up over his face to celebrate and ran straight into a tree. Very bad idea. I think it's been banned since since then. Um, so I liked footy and I liked funny things happening on the sporting field. So here's what you do. I went on the lookout for funny, sporty, particularly footy, story ideas. And as soon as you start looking, they start to appear in the world around you. We're surrounded by ideas all the time. We just notice what we're interested in. Okay, that's the real key to this. If you're looking for something like funny, sporty stories, they start to appear. For example, my son invited a new friend around and his friend's name was Baron Rumble. Now, as soon as I heard Baron's name, I thought that sounds like a sporty, fun name. So I decided I might call my character in these sporty, funny books, Baron Rumble. So I added Baron's name to my name collection. I'm a name collector. I've collected some fantastic names along the way, some very surprising ones, like there was a lady I used to work with at the ABC whose name was Cherry Ripe. That was her actual name. She was very sweet. Sorry. Uh, my old maths teacher on day one of high school. We all lined up outside the maths classroom and he said he came along looking pretty grumpy and he said to us, all right, kids, get inside. And we all went inside and he, he marched up to the, the blackboard it was in those days and he wrote his name on the board. And he said, my name is Mr. P. Nut, which we thought was funny and made him seem far less scary after that. <laughs> so, but I had collected names and I collect, I collect all sorts of names because they may be useful for characters in the future. So I collected Baron Rumble's name, but you know what? I thought it might be a bit unfair on Baron if I use his whole name in a story of mine. So I decided I'd just use the Rumble part and change the Baron to what it sounded to me like a fun, sporty, kids sort of name, which was Max. And I gave it two X's, Max with a double X, because I noticed that a lot of kids have their names spelt in unique and different sorts of ways. I met a kid named James who spelt his name J-A-Y-M-Z, which does spell James. 
And um, yeah, I decided that I'd make Max one of these kids with a slightly different spelling to his name. So I made it Max Rumble from Baron. Then one morning I, I was lying in bed, half awake, half asleep, and a word just popped into my head and the word was crunched. Now, that word, when I'm not looking for sporty, fun ideas, that word would have popped into my head and I wouldn't have thought about it again. But because I'm looking for sporty, fun ideas, the word crunched sounded like it could be something useful for a sporty, fun book idea. So what I did was I wrote the word crunched in a journal of mine. Now I've got lots and lots of journals and journals are vital. Because basically you get ideas at any old random time, but you don't necessarily need to use them at that moment. So what you do to make sure you don't lose that idea is store it up in a journal. That's just a notebook. It can be a cheap notebook or an expensive notebook, it doesn't matter. It's just a place where you go and store all your ideas that randomly appear to you every now and then. So I stored the, name, the word crunched in my journal and just waited to see what would happen. And my journal over time fills up with all sorts of ideas. I just write them all down and they end up coming out sometime later. They're really helpful in two places, actually, journals. They're really helpful when you're getting started. So when you're building up ideas and you need more and more ideas to see if you know what works with what, or for getting unstuck. Sometimes you, you're writing and it's all going well and then you don't know what to do next. And so a journal is really fantastic for helping you get unstuck. You can look through the journal, see an old idea that's in there somewhere, and it gives you the inspiration to keep writing. It's like, oh, that's what I need to do with my characters now. And it gets you unstuck. At this point, I'm using my journal to get me started on this footy, fun series about Max Rumble and the word crunched is in there somewhere. And then I needed one more idea to really get the thing firing. And that was the idea I noticed in some kids of having an overactive imagination. What I mean by that is some kids, especially boys, have, <laughs> have this tendency, I think, um, to start a story in a normal way, but then get really carried away because their imagination takes off and they get the story becomes much bigger than it really was because their act, act, imagination is uh, makes it a little bit bigger than it, than it actually was and makes it much more fun and exciting than, it, than perhaps it really was. I noticed that with boys a lot and I thought that was quite a fun thing to try and reproduce. So there's like the first few ideas. It's as simple as that. First few ideas and you can see them all on this the front cover of the very first book. You know it's called Max Rumble because of Baron Rumble. It's about footy because that was what I loved and I would have loved to have read stories uh, about footy as a kid. It's called Crunched because the word just popped into my head and I was on the lookout for sporty fun ideas. And you know, so I, I wrote that in my journal and you can see he's playing against two sumo wrestlers, which may be because his imagination has got a little overactive. Very simple ideas turned into 20 books. Those ideas are around us all the time. All we need to do to find them is to decide to notice them.